Uh, this is my first in-person trip uh, to, uh, to Kenya as uh, Secretary of State. I've had the great pleasure of being here a number of times before, uh, but I'm especially pleased to, to be here now. We, um, we actually did our first virtual visit uh, to, uh, uh, to Africa earlier uh, this year, including Kenya, but nothing uh, beats being here uh, uh, in person. Uh, General Kenyatta once said that uh, our children may learn about the heroes of the past, uh, our task is to make ourselves the architects of the future. Um, that's exactly what we're working on. For decades, Kenya and the United States have worked together to, to build that future. And today, our governments are partners uh, on virtually every critical issue we face, both through our bilateral relationship, but also uh, the work we're doing regionally and through institutions like the United Nations Security Council, where Kenya is serving a two-year term uh, and held the presidency very productively last month. Beyond our governments, uh, our countries are deeply, deeply connected. Business ties, partnerships between our civil societies, family and cultural ties going back generations. Tens of thousands of people in the United States very proudly claim their Kenyan heritage, including my former boss, President Obama. Before the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, Thousands of Americans traveled here every year to experience Kenya's hospitality for themselves, and they will again. Um, a few weeks ago, we Americans cheered for the two amazing Kenyan runners who won the marathon in my hometown, New York City, something that we often do because Kenyans win a lot. Uh, in short, the, the friendship between our countries uh, is strong, and it's not only good for our two countries, but for the region, and I'd argue for the world. And that goes to some of the things that not only did we talk about today, but that we're working on together every day. And let me just briefly touch on a few of them. First, uh, on ending uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, we are working to accelerate the global vaccine effort because, as we've said uh, repeatedly, uh, and we say it repeatedly because it is fundamentally true, no country, no region will be safe until we stop the pandemic uh, everywhere. As long as the virus is replicating, it's likely to be mutating, and as long as it's mutating, it may well come back and defeat some of the vaccines that are so effective and that we put in place. So we have to uh, continue to make every possible effort to get ahead of this. Uh, that was a major theme of the, the COVID ministerial that uh, we hosted last week, and I want to thank the Cabinet Secretary for her very strong participation uh, in that meeting. We're working with the African Union, with the African CDC, with, uh, with COVAX, to make COVID-19 vaccines available across the continent. We provided more than 50 million doses to 43 African countries to date, including, indeed, close to 4 million uh, doses here in, in Kenya. Uh, we've also given more than $1.9 billion in COVID-related assistance across Africa to help meet health and humanitarian needs, including uh, $76 million uh, to Kenya. And we've done this with no political strings attached. This is about saving lives. That is the only metric that matters. Um, I'm here today with someone well-known uh, to many Kenyans uh, and many uh, friends throughout the continent, Gail Smith, our coordinator for global COVID response uh, and health security, uh, to herald another step that we're taking in the fight against COVID. And that's something called the global, the global excuse me, COVID core a new public-private uh, partnership. What we found is the so-called last-mile challenges, including delivery and logistical hurdles, can make it difficult to turn vaccines into vaccinations, in other words, actually getting shots into arms. And through this global COVID core, uh, private sector companies will work pro bono to help countries overcome uh, these last-mile uh, obstacles. And we're very pleased to uh, welcome Kenya's participation as the first country to partner with the global, uh, global COVID core. Uh, they'll begin with an assessment of any gaps that are hindering uh, vaccination efforts and then help address them, but also, critically, uh, help build uh, capacity uh, here that lasts well beyond the engagement uh, of, the, of the COVID core. Second, on clean energy. Kenya is a model uh, of investment in renewable energy, which now provides 90 percent uh, of this country's power. And Kenya is one of the few countries worldwide that has set a target of 100 percent renewable energy by 2030. That's leadership. 
and leadership that, uh, as I told the Cabinet Secretary and President Kenyatta, we like to be able to brag on uh, around the world because it sets a powerful example. Uh, we're very proud to partner with Kenya on these efforts. For example, our Development Finance Corporation uh, has facilitated nearly $600 million in investments in wind farms and other renewable projects in Kenya. And we want to do more work together in this space uh, because clean energy infrastructure creates good jobs, it contributes to a stronger economy, and of course, it's critical in the fight against climate change. More broadly, uh, we're proud of the strong economic relationship that our countries have built, which includes about a billion dollars in annual two-way trade and recent uh, American private sector investments in Kenya across sectors ranging from food processing to telecommunications, total more than $725 million, including $93 million in investments in Kenya's small and medium-sized enterprises generated through the great work of USAID. Third, on advancing peace and security, the attack yesterday in Kampala was a painful reminder of how vital it is that we continue to work together to improve security throughout East Africa. The United States offers its deepest condolences to those injured in the attacks and to the families and loved ones of those who were killed. We're grateful to Kenya for being our security partner. Our countries consult frequently on critical situations throughout the region. One place where we're both deeply concerned is Ethiopia. Uh, the conflict there threatens not just that country, but its neighbors as well. I very much appreciate President Kenyatta's engagement on this, including at the United Nations and in person in Ethiopia. We're working closely with Kenya, the African Union, and its high representative for the Horn of Africa, former Nigerian President Obasanjo, uh, as well as other partners. Our special envoy, Jeff Feltman, is working with High Representative Obasanjo to press the parties to end hostilities immediately and without preconditions, to stop human rights abuses and violations, to provide humanitarian access for the millions in northern Ethiopia who are in dire need of life-saving supplies. Even as we've taken prudent measures to reduce our personnel uh, in Addis, our embassy remains fully engaged in these efforts and is providing support to American citizens. As we have for weeks, we continue to urge all American citizens in Ethiopia to leave the country using the best available options, and again, commercial aviation uh, is working uh, and is functioning normally. Regarding Somalia, the United States is grateful here as well to Kenya for a very strong security partnership and its contributions to Amazon as we work together to defeat al-Shabaab and other terrorist organizations. It's vital that Somali leaders complete the uh, national elections process as soon as possible and focus again on combating al-Shabaab and bringing greater stability to the region and to the country. And finally, on Sudan, here again we appreciate Kenya's stance against the military takeover and its role in the African Union's Peace and Security Council suspension of Sudan from AU activities. We support the Sudanese people who have repeatedly made clear their aspirations for democracy and we back their call to restore Sudan's democratic transition. Um, we're continuing to work with the international community to urge the Sudanese military to release all those detained uh, with the takeover. We're engaging intensely with representatives from all sides. I've been working the phones. Mali Fee, our new Assistant Secretary of State for African Affairs, was in Khartoum earlier this week. Uh, Sudan ha had been on a path toward a democracy and stability. Returning to that path is the best way for Sudan to attain peace and prosperity, become a leader on the continent, and uh, to restore very strong support from the international community. Uh, later today, I'll have a chance to meet with representatives from the Intergovernmental Authority on Development, which is instrumental for promoting peace and sustainable development, to discuss all three of these urgent governance and security challenges. Fourth, on the relationship between Kenya and the United States. Uh, earlier today, the Cabinet Secretary and I, uh, as uh, she noted, completed uh, the second strategic dialogue uh, bringing our countries together. We're very much looking forward to hosting Kenya for our next dialogue in Washington next year. Together, we're deepening cooperation in the five areas that we set out when the dialogue was initiated. Economic prosperity, defense cooperation, governance and civilian security, multilateral and regional issues, uh, and uh, public health cooperation. Here again, uh, these reflect the strength of our partnership, its depth, which fundamentally is grounded in our shared democratic values. 
And we're constantly working as well to make our democracy stronger and more resilient. Um, I started this morning with a roundtable conversation with members of Kenya's very dynamic civil society. In addition to being deeply impressed by the important work that they're doing on behalf of their country, we also discussed areas uh, and issues of serious concern, uh, including arbitrary arrests and detentions, extrajudicial killings of activists and journalists. We want to partner with the Kenyan government and with civil society to ensure that even while addressing uh, legitimate security concerns, the rule of law and human rights are safeguarded. That's how to build public trust in public institutions. We also discussed next year's elections. As we look ahead to 2022, it's critical that all parties, the government, opposition parties, civil society, work together to ensure safe and stable elections that reflect the will of the Kenyan people. As we've seen again today, Kenya and the United States are firmly focused on building our shared future together. Uh, I'm grateful for the good work we've done here in Nairobi. And ultimately, uh, what we know it comes down to uh, is making a difference in the lives of, uh, of our people, of our citizens. That is our, our responsibility. And everything we're doing together uh, has that very much in mind. And with that, thank you.